am honored and humbled to be here as we march and we remember our community members, our neighbors, our friends, and Minnesotans who died while homeless. I have done this march before, uh, many times over the last 20 years. I look forward to the day when we no longer march. I am honored and humbled to be with you tonight not as Lieutenant Governor, but simply as a community member walking side by side in solidarity and dedicating ourselves to say that everyone will have a place to call home. Chimi Gwich, thank you. I'm Steve Horstow from Simpson Housing Services. Thank you again, everyone, for coming out this evening for our 35th annual march. This is a silent vigil march. We will be following Luna, our puppet at the head of our procession. We will be marching to Plymouth Congregational Church at Franklin and Nicollet. Please be respectful and remember the reason that we're all here. Um, please be safe and we'll try and stay as, as grouped together as best we can for a safe march. Thank you, everyone. My name is Paula Northwood and I'm one of the ministers of this church and we grieve with you this evening over this senseless loss of life. I met Jennifer Ho a couple of years ago and have appreciated her passion and commitment to ending homelessness. So it is my privilege to introduce to you our Minnesota Housing Commissioner, Jennifer Ho. We can and must do so much more, so no one dies outside, so everyone has a safe and stable place to call home. Some of our neighbors died alone. Some of them died outside on a night like this, or worse. They spent not just one night outside, but many, too many. We need to stop to remember those who died this year because we still lack. And so we stop and carry on with urgency in your names. Thank you. Todd Julio Weldon. Bradley Bays Wagner. Cassandra Blackwolf. Joseph Robbins. Barbara Berry. Genevieve Littlewind Elk Nation. Gregory Jordan. Louis Carpenter. Gregory Holzer. Joshua Isaac. Melanie Haywood. Terry McCush. Jerry L. Walker. Joshua Hill. This year, we lost some very beloved people. But let's push to make more space for queer and trans people to get housing. Some of you care about lost their fleet. the wood. You gotta come on up to the high. He was going back into homelessness again. He would come in to Central to the free store every single day. You gotta come on up to the high. Well, you know you should surrender, but you can't let go. Come on up to the high. Come on up to the house. You got to come on up to the house. This world is not mine. I want everybody to know. I'm just she went on. Through. 
wanted to mention Tim Hamry because I am really proud that I got to move him into housing at the Glenwood. We spent a morning together at 6.45. He'd never say goodbye. He'd always say, see you later. So see you later, Dad. Good evening. My name is Steve Horsfield, Executive Director at Simpson Housing Services. On behalf of the organizing committee, I welcome you to the 36th annual Minnesota Homeless Memorial. For 35 years, community members have gathered for the Homeless Memorial March and Service to remember and honor people who have died while homeless in Minnesota. We honor community members who previously experienced homelessness and have since transitioned into stable housing. We remember advocates no longer with us who have devoted themselves to walking alongside individuals who have experienced homelessness. We remember each person who died while homeless. We recognize the barriers faced by community members while working to transition out of homelessness and the harmful systemic inequities faced by homeless community members who are black, indigenous, and people of color, LGBTQ+, and people with disabilities. In the past years, we have marched silently in the streets of Minneapolis, carrying signs with names of friends, family members, colleagues, and people we did not have the honor of knowing personally. With dignity and respect, we still remember the names and humanity of each person. Leading up to this year's Homeless Memorial, we have navigated unprecedented challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic, the murder of George Floyd, and political divisiveness propelled our community into uncertainty, emotional turmoil, and disconnection, with repercussions deeply felt by people who are experiencing homelessness and community members who are Black, Indigenous, and people of color. This year has also been a profound reminder of this community's incredible resilience, our ability to swiftly pivot and make adjustments with the pandemic, and our strength in working together to provide safety and dignity for individuals who are experiencing homelessness or transitioning out of homelessness. Tonight, we share a pre-recorded memorial service with the community. We will remember and honor 197 people, 84 who were lost while not housed, 89 formerly homeless friends, and 24 advocates who passed away in 2020. We will observe the traditions of reading the names of each person lost this year and share recorded memorial reflections from community members and Minnesota's Lieutenant Governor, Peggy Flanagan, will share her thoughts. We miss that we can't be together in person for the Homeless Memorial March and the Community Meal, a time to break bread with one another. We are so glad that you and each community member who joins us tonight is here as we honor each person who died while homeless last year. If you are viewing tonight's recording on Facebook Live, we encourage you to share a brief thought on the people we are honoring tonight. Later this evening and in the days ahead, I invite you to spend more time in reflection. Thank you for being here with us tonight. I'm honored to be with you in this virtual space to join together in community and in remembrance. This is an opportunity for all of us to remember the lives of neighbors, relatives, and friends who passed away this year. Those who may not always have had a home to shelter in. Today, there are 197 names to remember. For many years, this march has been an important tradition for me. And when I marched with you last year, it was my first time doing so as Lieutenant Governor. This has been an incredibly difficult year for all of us. When we came together last year, none of us were expecting to face the additional challenges the 2020 would bring. And I know that it feels like a lot has changed over the last 12 months. But one thing that has not changed is that every single person deserves a safe place to call home. That has always been true, but the need for a home has never been clearer than during a pandemic. Home represents safety, a warm place to sleep, and now protection from the virus. As we have learned over the last nine months, Minnesotans experiencing homelessness who contract COVID are far more likely to need hospital or ICU levels of care. It is incumbent on all of us to make sure that everyone has a safe place to be. And the safest place for you during a pandemic is your own home. But too many Minnesotans are struggling right now to keep their home, or they may find themselves already on the street. We know that COVID-19 did not create the housing crisis. Finding housing that is affordable was already a challenge that was affecting every corner of our state. 
That's why the governor and I have made housing a cornerstone of the administration since taking office. We understand that students can't perform well without a home. Having a safe place to call home keeps Minnesotans healthy and having a reliable place to live helps families find economic stability. Home is everything. I can tell you that the COVID-19 crisis has only deepened our resolve. It has exposed the disparities and inequities in our society. It has required crisis management and urgent, quick collaboration between the state, counties, cities, and tribes to find and manage isolation spaces, fund emergency shelter provider services, staffing, food, and create testing opportunities for those experiencing homelessness. We have to keep doing the work. And as we read these names and remember those that we have lost this year, I feel that we also must recommit to each other and to our obligation to continue fighting in order to make sure that every Minnesotan has access to affordable housing. As long as any of our neighbors is uncertain about having a safe place to sleep, there is work to do. When we get through this pandemic, and we will, we do not wanna go back to normal. Normal was not good enough. Normal meant thousands of people without anywhere to live and hundreds and thousands of people living on the edge. I wanna close with gratitude. Thank you for holding this important, powerful space every year. And my biggest thank you is to the folks who are working in our shelters and as service providers. Thank you for working tirelessly to serve our neighbors and to find safe housing for Minnesotans. I'd like to take a moment to recognize one name that was read today, that of George Floyd. His story is representative of the many things we are grappling with in this moment. But today I'd like to lift up his work with the Salvation Army. The work of providing shelter and outreach is always challenging, but no more so than right now. I am grateful for all that you do. Last year, I shared how I look forward to the day that we no longer had to march for those we've lost. But that day is not today. And until we are truly able to come together to meet the housing needs of our neighbors, I am honored to be your partner in this work. Thank you, and I look forward to continuing to work alongside each of you in pursuit of housing for all Minnesotans. Chi miigwech. Teresa Wilson Snyder. Jeffrey Hansen. Brian Jeffrey Reed. Gary Reese. Michael Stephen Running. Andre Lawrence DeGeneff. Douglas James Lee. Shauna Marie Gishik. Donald Munsuber. Anthony Demetrius Watson. Michael Church. Mark Kilpella. Tommy McCoy. John Burns Ross. Scott Ness. Robin Ray Reset. Kyle Culberson. Rachel Malone. Jesse Eric Prechet. Scott Michael Wysonen. Timothy Murphy. Paul Clock. Christopher Von Schwanenkamp. Max Casper. Robert Mason. Bodan Ole Stanislavif. Randall Jason Heimer. Kenneth Troy. Jennifer Ann Legru. Montgomery Chapman. Calvin Lewis Horton, Jr. Francisco Montiel. James Cannon, Jr. Dale Leonard. Clinton Bell Perrin. Antonio Aguilar. Antoine Marshall. 
Benito Orisha Jr. Ashley Don Amelia Mountain. Terrence Philip Hausladen. Theodore Price. Eduardo Ramon Castaneda. Peter Hapitas. Dennis Young. Jeff Allen Jones. Kenneth Jackson. Charles Leonard Olson. Jason Andrew Embertson. Shane Teron Boswell. Jordan Grider. Eddie Gordon. Rolanda Anderson. Ivan Little Eagle. Yvette Green Ragland. Keith Nathaniel Brown. Brandon Allen Lindemer. Ricky Strum. Brittian George Scott. Daniel Skinner. Kimberly Lee Wyndham Garcia. Arthur Moore. Michael Hollerman. Mohammed Noor. George Orndiff. Charlotte Marie Blue. Burton Gibbs. Steve Stepanek. Nathane Nathaniel Roby. Curtis Lyons. Laura Deline Stand. Unidentified Man. Roderick Lamoran Hamilton. Ralph William Teller. Tyler Eklund. Clarence Evans. Lucas James Gron. John Fredrickson. Baby Boy. Adil Miguel Herrera. Antonio Valencia Hernandez. Rolanda Anderson. Devin Madison. Andrew Adam Eastman. Kimberly Kelly. Marchand O'Neill. Arthur Obedi Howard Jr. Daniel Marshall. Ramon Jesse Rodriguez. Berdine Little Ghost. John Carlson. Onoa Dunn. Mark Jeffrey Bird. Taylor Jamin. Joanne Patricia Hernandez. Roland Loud. Bertrand Romero Davis. Michael Yost. Peter George Dommel. Charles Richard Swanson Jr. Cecilia Bluebird. Lawrence David Corbisia Sr. Ernest Newhouse. Jason Joseph Skurlock. Daryl Love. William Brian Magnum. Tony Legrone. Robin Lee Nelson. Jeffrey Scott Dunker. Elton Gino Blackfeather. Joseph Abraham McCrunnell. Laura Jean Filippiak. Patrick Allen Straw. Randy Scott Koskala. Robert Thurber. Jacqueline Ann Defoe. Baby Boy. Sheila Cree. Dakota Christelle Marks. Kevin Logan. Patrick Murray. Jeffrey Taylor. Rhonda Gopher. Abraham Big Crow. Leroy James Henry. Troy Andrew Volknot. Jerome Olson. Walter Henry Font Torres. Ariana Starr Bacanaga. Paul Johnson. Devetta Sam. Luke Andrew Chartier. Nathaniel Green. Catherine Lynch Krokak. Tracy Myers. Jabril Ahmed. Rodney Dwayne Perry. William Bunker. Boaz Dolan Brown Otter. Timothy Brousseau. George Leon 
Hawthorne. Santiago Rodriguez Montano. Martin Ellingson. Joseph Eugene Blackadder. Lucinda Renee Aganash. Dave Helmer. Michael Simone. John Brisker. Eddie Soul Jr. Ronald Skinner. Elizabeth Ann Storm. Jaden Lahu. William James Nichols. Elizabeth Ann Elmar. Robin Lee Dijarlet. Elizabeth Ann Jirik. Brian Vincent Nelson. Troy Davis Jr. Jones. Elijah McPhee. Derek LeJohn Addison. Brian Durrell Hess. Carlos Armando Melgar. Racina Jean Cree. Lorna Richardson. Larry Wells. Yvonne Lucier. Jennifer Mickleby. Gary Bruce Lahet. Eddie Alex Jr. Elton Left Hand. Nicholas Jason Swanson. Jolene Gill. Mary Jones. James Benny Tenhoff Jr. Joan Pilney. Sister Marguerite Cochran, CSJ. Barbara Ann Anderson. Elizabeth Rose Sammons. Thomas McLeod. Penny Waite. Donald Gishlecht. Adria Shepherd Morgan. Christine Faye Crandall. William Robert Olson. Ralph Fairbanks. Richard Young Copeland. Richard Sonda. George Perry Floyd. Mark Schindeldecker. Katherine Johnson. Andrew Benjamin. John Tall Whiteman. Kathy Kavami McKinley. Jerry Fleischhocker. Lori Clausen. Carol Berg. Bruce Full. Robert Strawberry. I'm Robert Hoffman. I'm the shelter manager at Simpson Housing. And there are a few individuals who we're remembering this year who I'm never going to forget. Uh, Bodan Stanislav, who we just knew as Stan. The first night that he came into my life, I remember him saying, I knew I was going to have something lucky happen to me today. It's Ukrainian New Year's Eve. Uh, Shauna Gishik, who used to come by the shelter in the dead of winter to get hygiene supplies from us or other basic things, but never wanted to stay until we found out the reason, which is that she'd found a stray cat, a little kitten that she named Boots, and she wanted to stay outside because she didn't think she could have him in the shelter and she didn't want him to be cold. Uh, luckily, we got them both indoors. Rod Perry, who looked like an extremely tough customer and acted like one too, he had lost an eye in a knife fight and had some pretty gnarly scars all up and down his arm. But once he got into housing, I learned a lot more about him. Uh, he could build furniture from scratch with his bare hands. He wrote poetry in Gaelic, and he got a dog who he loved and absolutely babied. Uh, Robin Rousset, Robin. Uh, she lived the last couple years of her life on the streets while she was dying of breast cancer, stubborn and fierce and always looking out for everybody but herself uh, up until the moment that she entered hospice. Paul Clock, who I cannot tell <laughs> a polite story about <laughs> in this setting. Uh, Marshawn O'Neill, Brian Nelson, Roland Loud, and so many others. Someone that I'd like to honor and remember is Leroy. Leroy was one of the first people that I met when I started working here at Simpson. And he was so inviting so warm. 
he made the best coffee and was very proud of the coffee he made. Um, he just was an incredible person that I felt like I really got to know in the four years that I've worked at the shelter. And he's played um, an impactful role in my life. And I really do miss him. I miss him walking through the door and saying, hey, kiddo, and throwing a whole bunch of candy on the desk and just his warm presence. So, Leroy, we miss you. We love you. And we remember you. When I think about the folks who have died this year from our community, I especially think about Eddie Gordon. Eddie was one of our folks who would was a regular at Street Voices of Change. And he would come and kind of hold court <laughs> because he was somebody for whom folks trusted and they cared for and that he would always let you know where you could get things or where things could be acquired from or who was helping with what. And um, he was kind of an elder in the community. So I'm gonna miss Eddie Gordon. Also this year, I think about Eddie Soul our two Eddies who will forever be kind of welded together which is really sad and really hard right but Eddie Sowell was a joyful guy a guy with kind of always a joke and a laugh and he's somebody who shopped in the free store quite a bit and so we kind of all knew what he liked and what his size was and what he was looking for um, so we'll just we'll kind of miss his his joking his jovialness which seemed like that's all of who he was and found out that he really suffered quite a bit. Um, but we'll miss him and his ability to bring kind of lightness to the room. And finally, um, we heard Terry Mack died. Now, Terry probably died at the end of 2019, but we didn't hear about it until 2020. So, um, but his real name, I think his, his government name was Terry McCush, but we knew him as T-Mack, as Terry, Terry Mack and he was a fixture at Central for years and years and years. Um, at one point in time, he had uh, collected many, many, many things and then would hide them in certain parts of our old building <laughs> because it was so big and so cavernous and there were all kinds of little places you could hide stuff. So Terry had kind of collected his things on our property. So we had said to Terry, yeah, man, you can't do that, right? No, <laughs> but he would always come in with a monstrously, wildly inappropriate joke. And not just like inappropriate for church, but like inappropriate, <laughs> like things we'd have to say. I'd be like, Terry, Terry, you can't, you can't tell that joke. It's not okay. Like it's, it's not cool. <laughs> but pastor, you gotta, no, no, Terry, you can't tell that joke. It's not cool. Um, but it, you know, when Terry decided it was okay to come inside, um, just the amazing way that he gave back to others and that he cared for everybody else and that he would always find something he knew you needed and bring it. He, the legend around here is that he found our original baptismal font uh, pedestal and uh, he knew exactly where it was. <laughs> and he'd brought in a bowl one day he's like this was from the baptismal font originally here and we don't know if it was or not but terry brought it and he gave it as a gift and so we still have that down here in the basement but oh i i still miss terry and his wildly inappropriate jokes kevin logan was an absolute delight uh he was easy to work with he was fun to work with and he sort of brought a light into the room uh, and his kids did the exact same thing. He was, a really wonderful father to work with. Yeah, I, I loved, absolutely loved working with Kevin and his children and they were very special um, to the community at Passage and um, you could tell in just an instant how much they all loved one another, um, and how much they loved their dad. Um, I'm thinking when Jamie and I were kind of reflecting on different moments, which there are so many to share, but, um, a lot of moments that came to my mind were really joyful, um, and just so fun loving, <laughs> um, and I was sharing kind of a silly story recently about, 
um, I'm perfect time of year too, because it's winter. So I was thinking back to our winter party that we had at Passage and um, there was a day that Kevin came downstairs and I was decked out in a snowman costume and he just opened the door and he just started cracking up. And um, what I remember about that is just how contagious his laughter was. Hi everyone, thanks for gathering tonight for the memorial. I'm disappointed that we can't meet in person, but thanks so much to the folks that took the time to put together this virtual event so we can still remember and honor those we've lost in 2020. Being the keeper of the list and the home, homeless outreach worker in Duluth, um, I'm honored and blessed to often know many of the folks that we memorialize this evening. Um, building relationships, and getting to know them, and especially seeing them get housing, is one of the bright lights in my life. Uh, once again, we've, like I said, we've lost way too many. Um, I'd like to take a special minute to remember Jackie Defoe and her baby son, Kevin, who we lost tragically in March of this year. Jackie was a young mom who had experienced homelessness. Uh, raising her son, she had housing, lost her life in March in a tragic way. So I'd like to just end by saying uh, one of my favorite quotes by Fulton Olsler. Please, when you meet a stranger, treat them well. Under a ragged coat, they may hide their wings. Thank you. What do you remember about Leroy? I just remember when I first started with the company uh, and working at the shelter, Leroy took me under his wing and uh, assigned the task to me of making the coffee, which here is a... Uh, a very hard thing to keep up with because people like their coffee a certain way. And, yeah. Uh, I remember it took a while to whip me into shape, but I finally was able to make it how we liked it, nice and strong with a little punch. Uh, and I remember you used to always give me a hard time when you came in here on how long it took me to pick up his traits for coffee-making ways. How are you going to keep his memory alive? Making sure everyone makes potent coffee. Can't have <laughs> any of that watered-down crap, as you would say. Uh, I'm Chris, and uh, I, I work on the street outreach team at St. Stephen's, and I've been doing that work for about four years. Uh, in this short time, many, many people I've known and served have died, all well before their time. I hope to honor all of them tonight in some small way by speaking about two people in particular, Charlotte Blue and Laura Stand. Charlotte was one of the first people I really got to know on outreach. Uh, she signed down on 31st and Stevens. Uh, Charlotte took a long time to trust people and for good reason, but once she did, she was extremely loyal. Her circle was small, but they looked after each other as best they could. I met someone who had become one of her closest friends uh, when he was new to the streets. and She was showing him how to sign, how to fly a sign properly. They often drove each other crazy, but there was real love there that developed over the years. She also cared deeply for her cat, who she kept in a stroller and pampered constantly. She had been dealt an impossible hand in life, but she survived because she was razor sharp. She died at the age of 32 this summer, and I feel lucky to have known her. Um, Laura Stand is another woman that I've known for years and who knew St. Stephen's well before I started there. This summer, we really became close while we worked on housing for her and her partner. They were both caught up in the legal system on the sort of ticky-tack warrants people experiencing homelessness deal with far too often. After months of waiting and paperwork and bureaucracy, they finally had a move-in date. Um, a week or two before they moved in, Laura was picked up on a warrant and held, eventually transferred to Anoka County, where they planned to hold her past their move-in date. Uh, after some finagling, they agreed to release Laura on Wednesday, ahead of her move-in on Monday. I drove out to pick her up from Anoka, and we drove for almost an hour back to the cities. Uh, we had the kind of deep conversation that this work is all about. She talked about the tragedies of her life, but Laura was also so excited for the future and for stability. She was filled with love for her kids, for her partner, Will, for her sisters, and for her dad. I dropped her off at the park and 
while her tent had been removed by the parks department, her sister excitedly offered to share her tent. Uh, the, the next day I got a call that early in the morning, Laura had passed away from an overdose. This was a particularly cruel tragedy and everyone who knew Laura is still grieving, but I'm still so grateful for that car ride that we shared. They were both native women in their thirties and were unbelievably resilient. They were both casualties of an opioid crisis that has been growing for years and will outlast this pandemic by a long shot. They're also ca casualties of the capitalist system and a society that demands surplus for a few and grinding poverty for the rest. But they were also real and full people with dreams and potential along with everyone else that we honor here. I'd like to say a few words about Patrick Murray. I met Patrick in 2005 when I started working at Catholic Charities. He was a long-term guest in the Pay for Stay program at the old Secure Waiting Shelter in downtown Minneapolis, and he was one of the first guests I really got to know well. The first thing Patrick ever said to me was, Petroskis, you don't know anything, except he didn't use the word anything. And he was right. I didn't know anything, or at least at first I didn't. But Patrick became my teacher and patiently showed me how to reach across the divide between my life and the lives of the other men at Secure Waiting. Patrick was a delight to spend time with. He was a hustler, he had boundless energy, he was a joker, and he was an endless talker. And talking with him was a little like being blasted from a fire hose. He was hilariously opinionated, incredibly intelligent, and he could talk at great length about any subject. His favorites were science, sports, politics, arts, culture, and especially music. Every time we talked, I came away with a new list of unknown artists to check out. During the time I knew him, Patrick was homeless more than he was housed, and he wrestled with chemical dependency, mental health, and physical illness during most of that time, but I'm glad to say he'd been housed at Catholic Charities Higher Ground for several years before he passed away this summer. One last thing is that Patrick's Anishinaabe heritage was extremely important to him, and he had a deep connection to the Ojibwe language and culture and spirituality, so I want to end by saying, Gigawabamin Minawa Niji. See you later, my friend. One of the folks that I was privileged to work with and walk alongside was Carlos Melgar. Um, one thing I'll always remember about him is that he kept his apartment sparkling clean. Everything had a place and every time he walked in there it smelled like really good incense. Um, and I know that he was really nervous that when he passed he would not leave a legacy and he wouldn't be remembered. Um, and he would remind me of that every time we talked, not to forget about him. And so I think it's important to continue to tell his story. Um, and he has shown that he has left a ripple effect already and has reached people that I couldn't even imagine with his story um, and his life. So it's important to continue saying his name, continue telling all of our clients' stories, um, and that Carlos Melgar has left a great, great legacy that has reached far and wide. Good evening. My name is John Cole, Interim Director of Align Minneapolis. What a beautiful service of remembrance we have all shared in this evening. On behalf of the Homeless Memorial Committee, I would like to express my gratitude to each person who has been a part of creating this special virtual service. We offer sympathy to each person who has lost a loved one who has experienced homelessness or a loved one who has been an advocate for community members experiencing homelessness. Our thoughts are with you now and in days ahead. Most of all, we remember the 197 individuals who we have honored tonight. We hear their names. We remember them. We cherish them as members of our community. Normally each year following the Homeless Memorial Service, we would all share in a community meal, break bread together and celebrate the lives of beloved community members. I am sorry that we will be unable to do that this year. We will miss the delicious meal usually provided by Minnetonka United Methodist Church. We hope you will share this spirit of community tonight and in the months ahead. It would be easy to close your laptop or turn off your phone tonight and simply rest in grief and powerlessness. So let's all take a moment to make a commitment to ourselves and our community. 
What is one thing we will do to ease the burden of homelessness and housing insecurity? Will we donate monthly to mutual aid, to a shelter or social service organization? Will we become politically involved, advocating for affordable housing? Will we discuss what we learned and felt tonight with our loved ones? Post your commitment in the comments to build solidarity and connection to get us through this struggle. When you leave the virtual service, please light a candle in remembrance of the individuals we have honored. Share a meal or conversation with a family member or friend. We hope you will take some time to reflect on the names and memories of these community members who are dearly missed. Thank you for gathering tonight for the 36th Annual Homeless Memorial Service. Stay healthy, wear your mask, stay well. Good night.